Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to VetNet Entrepreneur. This is our mandatory fun session, uh, a drawing class with Max Uriarty. I'd uh, just like to hand it over to Max now, and he will uh, take the show. Any questions or comments you might have, leave it at the event or uh, if you're watching live on YouTube. Max, how are you today? Oh, I'm fantastic. How are you? Pretty good. Sorry, my dog is squeaking his toy over there. He's, <laughs> he's very rude. Hi, uh, I'm Max. Um, I'm the uh, creator of Terminal Lance, as I'm sure most of you know that are here. Uh, so the sorry. <laughs> so um, the fine people over at Google and uh, and um, Google Plus and everybody else involved asked me to come and teach this sort of mandatory family fun day uh, drawing class of sorts. Um, so I figured that uh, this would be a fun thing, random thing, uh, for anybody interested in art or drawing or even just um, bored and you're on duty and you need something to do on the internet that isn't uh, looking at all kinds of weird porn, um, you can watch me draw something. Uh, I'm going to try to avoid drawing all the penises that I'm sure you all want me to. So, uh, you know, maybe at the end, I'll um, I'll turn it over to the dicks. But until then, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna genuinely try and and uh, and teach you something. But you know, maybe we'll take some requests. If you guys leave comments, um, you know, you can ask me to draw something, and I'll draw it for you, and we'll see what happens. You know. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll just. Uh, well, actually, you know what? I actually we've already gotten a few questions. Uh, one of the questions, the first one was, Max, has being the creator of Terminal Lance ever gotten you laid? Um, yes. The next question, uh, <laughs> what's your favorite forward deployed memory? Um, God, I don't know. I remember this one time uh, when I was in Iraq. There was this kid named English Bob. And they called him English Bob because he was the only one of this group of kids that spoke English. And uh, I can't really think of anything specific, but I really loved him. Like if I, if I had like a favorite, like nice memory of Iraq, that was probably it. just English Bob being awesome because we'd like give him candy and we'd be like, "Hey Bob, English Bob, why don't you go pass out the candy to everybody else?" And he would know what we were saying and he would go and do it, and it was just like. A nice thing. I'm sure I could think of an awful thing that would be my favorite memory, but I'd rather just stick with that. Um, let's see here. Where are all the naked midgets? Um, they are off camera, but they are here. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I think that's it for right now. Let's let's. Uh, I'll go ahead and start drawing something. I don't know. Okay, so. Um, I guess like one of the one of the big things that um, you see in those like how to draw stuff books, those like how to draw cartoons or whatever, is like they always they always show you like uh, here, let me get a darker color here. They always show you like draw a circle and then draw a line in your circle and across in the middle of your circle and then uh, and then you know it shows you like the next step where you already have that drawn. And then it's like, draw the chin. This is, you know, you're drawing a face or whatever. But, you know, I never liked this, um, this method of, of teaching. I never really liked uh, this kind of idea that there is some um, scripted way that you can, you can draw anything. Because it's really not. I mean, everybody kind of has their own way of working. And this is bullshit because um, it doesn't really... You know, this might not work for everybody with the way that people draw. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do things, and it may or may not help you. It may or may not be remotely useful to you at all. Uh, but at least you get to see how I do it, and if that's interesting to you, then stick around. Otherwise, uh, you know, maybe you'll, you'll be more satisfied when I start drawing dicks at the end of it. But, uh, so let's see here. Okay, so usually the way what I um, what I like to do is uh, I think more gesturally, and I try to think more in terms of um, 
of planes, I guess you could call it, like like what the actual object uh, would be shaped like. I feel more like I'm I'm like sculpting it on the paper than I am following some kind of uh, written uh, a doctrine for how to draw anything. So, you know, we'll we'll do we'll do like Abe from Terminal Lance, right? So, um, and that's a little too. So, you know, generally, I try to just get the, the general form in there, and it's not anything uh, exact, you know. And I do, this, I do this line almost really more out of habit than anything. It doesn't really help me that much, but, um, you know, this is like the eye line, so it's just kind of like it gives me a general idea of where the eyes are going to be. And then I try to think of the planes of the face or the the general um, kind of like what are what are what are the the angles and the and the actual planes of this face and that way it helps you uh, maintain a kind of consistency in your lighting and it helps you think about lighting and that's really what you should be thinking about is like you know what does this object look like as a three dimensional object um, and not just like you know draw a circle because that's it's so like abstract to just say draw a circle for a head or whatever. So I mean, don't think about it like that. Think about it as like drawing. Um, think about it as like this is a three D three dimensional object, and you're just trying to put it on paper. So don't be so strict about it, but just do it. They say that uh, one of the biggest problems that people have when they're learning to draw is that um, you're supposed to draw what you see and not what you think you see, because um, people have this amazing ability to kind of uh, reinterpret what they're actually seeing and and bring it out wrong because like normally you know if I asked you to draw an eyeball you'd be like oh this is an eye this is what an eye looks like you know but that's not actually what an eye looks like that's actually just a, a visual uh, symbol of what an eye looks like that's what my brain has interpreted an eye to look like this isn't actually what an eye looks like if I were to look at an eye it probably looks something more like this, more like a three-dimensional um, thing, because an eye is a three-dimensional object. It's not just a, uh, it's not just a, a an almond with a circle in the middle. You know what I mean? So, um, I don't know if any of this is making any sense, but I'm just kind of rambling. So, uh, deal with it. So, anyway, so this is you know, we're again, we're drawing Abe. Abe's got these like kind of heavy um, eyelids, and I don't know why I just kind of like drawing them like that. He's got his mouth, got this kind of smirk on him. So his hair, which always comes down at a certain angle, and always flips up at a certain angle. Now, obviously, you know, I draw in my own kind of style, I guess. I mean, this isn't hyper-realistic. It's not... I wouldn't even call it really realism, but I mean, I guess it, it does kind of fall in the realm of like comic realism. Um, but yeah, so generally, and this is you know a really off the cuff kind of uh, drawing, but this is basically like kind of where I start um, when I'm doing a drawing of anything in, in F. Abe specifically. But um, you know, I start with this really loose under pencil sort of thing. I never go straight in with the black because that's just asking for trouble. Uh, we'll make a new layer. And we'll dim this guy. Uh, so uh, once, so you know, I've, I've got my pencil layer here and uh, and I've got my um, and I'm ready to start, you know, putting black down because Terminal Lance is black and white, obviously. Um, kind of a thematic thing. Like I thought about doing it in color once, but then I was like, uh, no, I think I'm I'm gonna just keep it black and white as like a general thing. But uh, so once I have um, my uh, my pencil layer down and I'm ready to go, uh, you know, I put a new layer on top of that. I don't know, I don't think you guys can actually see the layer stuff, but so I have another layer on top of it, um, and. Uh, and I have like a different brush tool to uh, to actually draw it. So 
I usually start with the eyes. I feel like the eyes are kind of like a normal or, or like a typical thing to kind of start with for most artists. I don't know why eyes are just like so uh, people have this like natural uh, attraction to drawing eyes or to, to the eyes in general. Um, it's like a human behavior sort of thing. I don't know. I'm probably reading way too much into it. But um, see, I generally start with the eyes. The eyes kind of like anchor the face too. It's like it's really it's easier to kind of tell what's going on with the entire thing when you have the eyes kind of like done, or at least a really good idea of what you're doing with them. Uh, the program I'm using right now is Sketchbook Pro um, by Autodesk, uh, and you can actually download it for free if you have a uh, .edu email address. Um, it's a really great program too. I usually do terminal lines in uh, Photoshop actually. So, um, And I, I generally draw straight on the computer these days. When I first started terminal lines I did it by hand uh, and I would scan the, the inks in and stuff. So you'll see that the, the first like 30 comics or so are a lot more um, they almost have like a grittier look to them. And it's because they're actually done by hand uh, with ink and brush and, and all that stuff. But um, I think the original reason that I stopped doing them by hand was because I moved. And I didn't have uh, like a work desk or anything. Uh, so I was like, oh, well, I'll just do it on my, on my uh, computer. And then it just kind of became the thing that I would, I, I just kept doing it because it was like easier. The other thing too is like I make mistakes a lot, so you'll see me, you know, undo, Control Z quite a bit. You know, that's just kind of how it goes. So, you know, this is basically, I mean, I'd fill in his hair black, too. But uh, Oh, and Abe, Abe doesn't actually have black hair. He's actually got, like, a dark brown hair. But because the comic is in black and white, I had to kind of, like, figure out a way to, you know, it's like, what are your darkest values? You kind of just have to pick a color or pick what your darkest value is and just kind of go with it. So, like, you know, dark browns in the Terminal Lance world are actually black. And then, you know, I guess... That wouldn't really work if I had like a really dark, like African black guy, because then you'd be like all black, and that would be racist. So and people would be really angry at me. But it's a comic, so it's not real, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be. <laughs> Sorry, I'm rambling at this point. So I mean, if you're if you're listening, good on you. But uh, so uh, you know, here's Abe. This is basically Abe, right? Um, now, it might seem kind of, like, silly to do, to, to really, because, uh, I mean, you saw my, my pencil drawing. Like, I actually um, had kind of plotted out where the planes of his his cheek, his, like, cheekbone and, and like, the side of his face and everything was. And uh, and I had, I had really thought about um, his face as a three-dimensional object. And it might seem kind of silly, given that this is just such a, really like cartoony drawing, but it actually, you know, having this foundation underneath it gives it that much more, um, it makes it that much more visually appealing because uh, it's correct, or at least as correct as I need it to be. I mean, it's not, you know, perfectly anatomically correct or anything, but, uh, you know, if I would have just went straight in with the inks, it probably would have been all kinds of just stupid looking and nobody would have liked it. So, um, yeah, so uh, this is Abe, as I'm sure you've seen many, many times. Uh, let's see here. Oh, wait, wow, we got a ton of questions. 
Max looks like an Irish Christian Slater. Hold on. <laughs> Mike Hawk. Okay, that's good. Max, you should tell us about the Triangle Hotel. I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, how many USMC-related dick drawings have you made in your entire life? Um, you know, a little-known fact, actually, every Terminal Lance comic is actually drawn with thousands of dicks. It's like stippling, uh, but with, with tiny, tiny penises that, draw, that make up the outlines and, and everything. Um, so, millions. Uh, <laughs> what is the dumbest thing you ever saw or heard of a boot doing? Uh, you know, one time, one of my boots... Um, he fell off his bed at four in the morning one night and like broke his knee or something. It was really weird. He had like knee problems for the rest of his life. Um, and for no reason, he wasn't even drunk or anything. He just fell out of his bed. And I don't know if that's a boot thing or just him, but it was, it was funny. Uh, <laughs> what programs do you use to create your comic? I use Photoshop. Pretty much 100% exclusively, I use Photoshop to create Terminal Lands. The program I'm drawing on uh, here is actually Sketchbook Pro. Um, it is not Photoshop. Uh, but Sketchbook Pro has a different kind of quality to the line work, I think. I actually really like the, um, the brush line work in Sketchbook Pro more than Photoshop, actually. But uh, it's not as easy to do text and everything in Sketchbook Pro, so I use Photoshop just because it's, it's kind of like a more all-around, uh, uh, I don't know even what the word is. It's a more better program. <laughs> um, let's see here. Do you hand-draw your comics first? No. Uh, well, okay, that's kind of a lie. Here, let me show you something. So I keep this book in my back pocket. Hey, stop it. Sorry, my dog. Uh, I keep this book in my back pocket uh, at all times. And it's just like a shitty little moleskin book. White people love moleskin books. Um, and uh, I do um, little thumbnail sketches of all my comics, of all my jokes and stuff. Um, so, I mean, if you pick up any one of my, my little books, I've got a bunch of these that are like filled up and laying around. You'll see tons of preliminary terminal land sketches. You'll even see a lot of comic strips that didn't make it because they were either like too. I have I have refused to put ones up that were like too crude or like too much. I think this one, yeah, this one is the chaplain, the New Year's the New Year's chaplain one where he's like wakes up and the chaplain's in bed with him. That's what that's that's what that comic started as, and then you know it ended up being what you see uh, on the internet. So this is what I do by hand. So I do all these by hand. Uh, in my book, and then um, this gives me the foundation to start working digitally. Because when I, 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 I don't know if this is everybody, but for me, um, whenever I just start going digitally, like from the beginning, uh, it, it, I find it's like really, it's hard to get exactly what I'm thinking in my head onto the screen. Like for some reason, there's like the separation of, it's hard to create something on the screen, but it's easy to create something in a little book. Uh, so as far as the layout and stuff goes, I do it in my little book, and then um, and I write all the jokes out here. Um, so I do all that in my little book, and then uh, and then I put it on the screen, and uh, and then you end up with what you get. Um, are you drawing with a mouse or one of those drawing pad things? Uh, I draw with a Wacom uh, Intuos. Tablet, uh, Wacom Intuos 5 Touch tablet. Um, and this is the pen. It's a pretty high speed little thing. Uh, I don't know anybody that makes comics with a, with a mouse. I mean, these days, you know, you can buy, you know, there's so many solutions for drawing on your computer these days, but I would always recommend Wacom uh, tablets. They're, they're the best. It doesn't matter <laughs> what else there is. They're, they're always the best. They're always going to be the best. So. Uh, if you could just say dick, it would be worth it. Dick. Uh, draw the little Terminal Lance guy, but it's a penis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so funny thing about the uh, the Terminal Lance, the little Terminal Lance dudes. I'll actually show them to you. 
Um, I don't draw those actually, or at least not in the traditional sense of drawing. So like you know this guy, which is what it, I think he's this reader or user is referring to. Uh, these little dudes that you see around the site um, are not drawn by hand. I actually do them in a program called Adobe Illustrator, uh, and they're all vector-based. And um, I do that so that um, I design them to be uh, completely, they have like interchangeable parts, if that makes any sense. Um, so here's, here's what they look like in Illustrator. Uh, and so actually what's cool about Illustrator is since it's vector based um, and not hand drawn like, like the regular comics are, you can actually zoom in as far as you want and these lines never ever lose quality because they're actually being generated by the computer using a series of, of points and, and graphs and shit. So, uh, or sorry, pardon my language. Um, but yeah, so the benefit of these is that they can be output at any resolution, and uh, you can print them at any size, and that's kind of why I, I decided to make them in Illustrator and not draw them by hand. Um, but, so I'm not going to draw a penis version of this guy right now, because that would take too long, because uh, Illustrator is a very slow, arduous process. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? How did you get the ideas for how your characters look when you first started Terminal Way. Uh, nice porn stash. This isn't a mustache. I'm like Spanish, so I barely grow facial hair at all. This is like a day of not shaving. But, um, how did you get the ideas for how your characters look when you first started Terminal Way? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, there weren't originally any characters in Terminal Lands. Uh, like I, when I first started the comic, I was just kind of like debate I had in my head was like, am I going to base this comic around characters or am I going to uh, <laughs> am I going to make a kind of generic um, you know, universally relatable character that everybody um, can relate to. And that's, like, well, that's what I ended up doing at first until I got to about strip like 91 or something when I introduced uh, Garcia into the mix and so then Abe and Garcia Abe didn't have a name until like strip number 90, 90 whatever when I first brought in Garcia. And the only reason I gave Abe a name is because I started writing the uh, Terminal Lance graphic novel, which is currently in production, uh, not out right now. Um, the, um, so that, then that was when I kind of gave them names and, uh, and I had to actually really figure out what the characters look like. Now Abe, um, you know, I think it's kind of obvious is uh, is based on me on some level here with the, I mean, Abe was always kind of like my hypothetical kind of fantasy version of myself. Of course, I'm not as big of an asshole and I'm not as dumb as Abe can be sometimes, but, um, you know, that was like the original intention of Abe was to kind of be me. He's an 0351. His name's Abe. My middle name is actually Abraham, which is how I got that name. Uh, and I wanted, you know, he, he's, he's analogous to me. And uh, I think that's the right word. Um, so, really shitty hair coloring job. But uh, um, Garcia, now for Garcia, let's, let's start drawing Garcia. Why not? We're here. May as well. Uh, let's just start a new thing. So, let's talk about Garcia. Um, I love Garcia. He's <laughs> he's a, he's a completely fictional character. Um, there is nobody that Garcia is based on, um, and there's there's reasons for that that I won't get into, but will be discovered in the graphic novel. Um, and I guess the, the kind of functional purpose of Garcia in the Terminal Lance comics is, uh, is to kind of be the balancing point of Abe. So like Abe, you know, he's, he's really brash and he's, he's a smart ass and, uh, Garcia, he kind of keeps him, um, kind of keeps him honest, I guess. Like, you know, he's always kind of trying to talk him out of 
uh, stupid shit and kind of keeps him on the right path. But, you know, even at the same time, Garcia is still also a kind of Terminal Lance type person. Like, he doesn't really... Um, he's not like a, a motivated lifer or anything, but he's, you know, just trying to, uh, trying to balance Abe out a little bit. And uh, for the design for Garcia, you know, I don't really know where I came up with the design. This is kind of like, um, <laughs> it was kind of reminded me of, uh, what's his name, Saget from, uh, from Street Fighter. <laughs> he's got like, you know, the tiger. He's the one with the tiger punch, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I don't really remember. I haven't played Street Fighter in a while. But, yeah, I, um, think, I think you're right. I think you're right, Max. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I don't know. I just I, I like the idea of a bald character. Like, you don't really. It's not a character type. You really see that often. Like, you know, I feel like Abe is almost like typical in a lot of ways of like regular uh, character design, but but. Um, Garcia, you know, he's got this whole quality to him where he's like, he's older and he doesn't really give a shit. Um, and uh, and he's, he's Mexican as hell. So he's got these, like, droopy eyelids. I'm actually Hispanic. People don't realize this, but... <laughs> I also, I wanted to put in a character of a different race, too, because Abe is, you know, white for the most part. And, um... You know, so often in comics, you just get, like, two white guys or whatever, whatever the, the creator of the comic is. And so I really wanted to bring somebody in that was, like, you know, not the same thing. He's got his, his, <laughs> his field stash. It was funny because I made that comic about how mustaches don't look good on anybody. And then I go and I make Garcia, and he's, like, you know, he's always got his, his mustache. Um, I guess the reason behind the mustache for Garcia, as far as the justification of his character goes, is that he he kind of always considers himself like a field marine, or quote unquote a field marine. So he's like, you know, he rarely wears a skivvy shirt, and uh, he always kind of thinks of himself as being kind of like better than um, the garrison type world. Like he doesn't really give a shit about any of that. And he bicks his head because it's nice and clean, which I never, I never really did. Um, I know a lot of Marines that did, though. It's pretty common. Um, as I said, Abe is based on mostly what I looked like, so he's got like the medium reg haircut, which is better, a better haircut than the low reg. I will say, a lot of Marines get the low reg just to kind of like stick it to the man or whatever, but. I always thought the low reg looked so bad. Like, it, it looks awful. It really does. And you get this, like, stupid duckbill thing going on in the back of your head, and, and it's, like, it tapers all the way down to, like, your neck, and it doesn't look good at all. Like, you know, it, I don't really care about the regulations or anything. Like, if you don't subscribe to any of that, then then awesome. But, you know, like, the low reg is just a crappy haircut, like, no matter how you look at it. So. Uh, and Garcia, he's got these, like, bags under his eyes, which I always try to keep I don't know why but I just like I like putting those there I guess it's to make him look more Mexican I don't know <laughs> what's going on in my head but um, let's see here so uh, this is Garcia and I'm sure you've seen him before uh, yeah, so Garcia, you know, as far as my character design choices go, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I wanted a character that was kind of, like, strong-looking, you know? So he's got this kind of, like, demeanor about him that's like he doesn't really give a shit. And, um, you know, whereas Abe is more like the plucky kind of uh, lighthearted, doesn't take anything seriously kind of guy, Garcia is kind of like the opposite of that. Because Garcia is actually an 0331, but he got put into an 0351 section. Uh, in his platoon, which is a very common sort of thing that happens all the time. Um, let's see here. What else do we got? Wow, man, these questions just keep coming. Um, <laughs> hold on. Okay. So, uh, what is Cohen up to nowadays? 
Is he still humorously drunk at the best times? I don't know what Cone's up to these days. Um, Cone was featured in a couple of Terminal Lands comics, actually. Uh, he was in my, my platoon. Uh, he's a great guy. He loves to drink. Uh, I hope he still does, because that's what we all loved about him. Uh, are you going to bring back the zombie apocalypse? Probably not, and I'll explain why. So, the necropocalypse, which is what this, this reader is referring to, Adam Moore, uh, I loved I loved the Necropocalypse. I thought it was hilarious. Unfortunately, my audience was like 50% split on whether or not they gave any bit of a shit about the Necropocalypse. So, like, you know, there was one half of my audience that was like, this is awesome! I love it! This is the best comics ever! And then there was the other half of my audience that was like, you fucking suck, man! Quit doing these gay-ass zombie comics! And bring back the regular comics. This isn't what I read Terminal Lance for. And they get, like, really upset about it. And it's, like, a free comic that they don't have to pay for. So I don't know. But, um... <laughs> uh, so, no, I'm probably not going to bring back the Necropocalypse. I did have another idea um, <clears throat> for a, another ten-part series. But it's centered around the, the legend of the Dependipotamus. So it's not, <laughs> it's not going to be a zombie thing, but it'll be another ten-part uh, series like the Necropocalypse. Um, I'm think if there's enough demand for it, I would like to do another print run of the Necropocalypse and this other one about the Dependipotamus, and that way you people can buy prints and stuff, and uh, it could be cool. Uh, put Charlie on camera, okay? Charlie, come here, come here, <laughs> come here. Uh, this is my dog. This is Charlie. He's my best friend. <laughs> okay. Uh, please at least draw one dick to make this whole thing worth it. Uh, we'll get to that. Any tips for someone going to basic soon? Um, uh, um, grow your hair out while you can. Um, you mentioned once doing a graphic novel. How's that coming along? It is coming along. How is it coming along? I don't know how to answer that, but uh, it is coming along on some level. Um, licensing and other offshoot projects and properties based on terminal lands in the works. Yes. Uh, specifically, um, let me see here. Specifically, there will be offshoot projects based on these guys. So look forward to these, more of these coming soon. Um, I can't really give you any details right now, but look forward to them. Uh, do you have any other characters or works out aside from Terminal Lands? Uh, there is Into the Mangrove, which is a, a comic that I kind of co-write and produce um, that I work on with an, another artist named Brad Hawk. Uh, he's... A very talented uh, animation student at the school that I go to, and we decided to start a comic. It's about kind of man-based humor and stuff. I'm sure you've seen it on Terminal. You've, I've, I've thrown the links up on Terminal Lance and stuff for once in a while. So, um, if you haven't checked it out, it's intothemangrove.com. You can Google into the mangrove, and it'll come up. Uh, it, it might not appeal to everybody, but it's great. Uh, has it been harder doing Terminal Lance after being out of the Marine Corps for so long? Uh, yeah, actually, it, it really has. And, you know, that's um, that's just how it, how it is, I guess. Like, I'm not one of those guys. I'm not going to do Terminal Lance forever. I'm just going to throw that out there right now because, um, you know, how long can you do something? How long can you write about something that you're no longer a part of? And I love doing it, and I plan on doing it for, you know, a, a little bit longer, but it's definitely not going to be forever. So I'll just I'll leave it at that. Um, Terminal or Garcia looks like Hitler's bastard grandson with that stash. Okay. Uh, well, you know that's the Marine Corps regulation for mustaches, right? They got to be, you know, you either have like a Hitler stash or you have like pretty much nothing. So, uh, <laughs> are the illustrations in your new Into the Mangrove comics inspired by Ren and Snippy? They look very similar to me. Hilarious, by the way. Well, you know, most of the artwork in Into the Mangrove is done actually by Brad um, and not by me. So, in his 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 uh, his aesthetic generally is very very Ren and Stimpy kind of inspired. So um, he's uh, 
you know that that's that's really his thing, and he he loves doing it. And I I think his artwork can be really great when uh, when he does do that. Uh, Garcia's my favorite. No, you're my favorite. Rian and Bucko. Uh, <laughs> Max, what is what was your worst experience with a corman? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I ever had like a terrible experience with a corman, other than trying to go to BAS and and like having them totally not paying attention or giving a shit. <laughs> That's like every day at BAS though. So, um, how did you get involved with the Marine Corps Times? Did they approach you or did you talk to them? I think originally I had thrown it up on Terminal Lance. I was like. Hey, if anybody at the Marine Corps Times is reading this, I'd love to do a comic in your paper. And then they just kind of sent me an email, and they're like, "Hey, we read that, and we we think it'd be awesome." And uh, you know, I've been working with them ever since. They're a great bunch of guys over there. Uh, nothing but good things to say about the Marine Times. I think their <laughs> I think their headlines could be a little sensationalist uh, sometimes, but they're good. they're good they're good people. Um, I'm kind of surprised and impressed at the low number of Wook women marine jokes. Most marine core humor pages kind of focus on that. Kudos for being awesome without paying, without playing it out. Thank you, actually. You know, that's something that I kind of, um, I make an effort to do, actually. Like, I don't like, um, I don't like sinking low in my, like, I guess sometimes I do <laughs> kind of go too far or go a little bit low, and then my humor can be crude, but I feel like there's some things, um, that you don't need to kind of constantly poke at or whatever. And I feel like all the Wook jokes and everything, like, they're funny. And, I, you know, and of course, I read the other Facebook pages and stuff, like, you know, Just the Tip of the Spear and Evan Boot or whatever. But it's like those jokes, they just kind of get old after a while. Like, how many times can you make a Wookie joke in, like, <laughs> in a single day before it's, like, just too much, you know? Um, does Terminal Lance have a birthday? Well, I mean... The, the day the Terminal Lance launched was January 5th. Uh, so I guess January 5th, I don't know. Uh, are you ever going to make another animated Terminal Lance short like Post? Yes. Yes, I am. But I can't tell you when. <laughs> uh, does Abe have a plan for when he gets out? Oh, he's... Uh, um, he's going to go to school, I guess. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> Can people send in stories and experiences for comics? You know, people send me stuff all the time, um, and I'll say, you know, I've never, I've never looked at somebody's emails or messages and been like, I've never been like, um, oh, sorry. Uh, so I've never looked at somebody's email and been like, oh, I'm going to use this joke. Um, what I have done is I'll take an email. And I'll read it, and I'll be like, oh, hey, uh, you know, this, reading this inspired me to think of a different comic or to, or, or it turned into something else. So, like, people's emails really help me kind of think of new comics, but I've never actually, like, some people send me these things, and they're like, panel one, this happens, panel two, this happens, panel three, this happens. Never, not a single once have I ever taken somebody's joke like that. But um, they do help uh, kind of just, like, spur creativity, I guess. Um, let's see here. Any tips for an aspiring artist who is currently going to school en route to the officer side? Um, well, if you're an so you're an artist and you're going to be an officer too. Well, it seems like you've already got your next four years planned out, sir. Uh, <laughs> how does it feel to know that you've essentially started a cult following with Marines, especially since you're so prone to hating just about anything? <laughs> <laughs> or they're so prone to hating just about anything. Um, it's kind of cool, I guess. I think it's kind of funny that I got out and I became... Um, I, I got out, never wanted to re-enlist, but I got out and then kind of became famous for making fun of the Marine Corps, which is a really weird thing to do, I guess. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, what kind of beer do you drink? I'm a Sam Adams guy, personally. I love Sam Adams. That stuff is delicious. It is like candy in my mouth, um, and it's great. So, uh, that's, that's, sorry, that, that took a while, I'm sorry, that got, you know, that was a lot of questions, but let's go back to drawing something. Uh, so, uh, let's see, we got, what, 20 minutes left? So here's Garcia, right? Uh, let's do something new. 
Let's do. <laughs> uh, I know people really want to. I'm just going to do it. I'm sorry, Google. They'll probably never invite me back, but I'm going to do this. So uh, in the last strip, or in the the strip prior to this, this last, to the Minecraft one. Uh, there was the penis dragon, and I've gotten a lot of requests to draw the penis dragon, so I'm just going to do it, and I apologize to everybody in advance. Um, so, you know, drawing drawing dicks is kind of an art, <laughs> you know, and drawing the penis dragon is no different. Um, I think I'm going to make t-shirts with the penis dragon on it. I don't know. It's pretty badass. Like, you really think about it. It's like a penis, but it's also a dragon. Like how cool is that? And of course, you know, I do I do a really nice pencil drawing uh, before I uh, I go to the inks. So, and this is a weird curve. I've never seen a dick that curves this way, but um, you know, I guess you know. Uh, <laughs> I guess the weight of its massive head uh, brings it down a little bit. I'm sorry, I have no taste, so I don't know why they invite me to do these things. But um, it's kind of like Seth MacFarlane at the Oscars. It's like, why would you invite Seth MacFarlane to, to host the Oscars? Why would they invite me to teach a drawing class? All I'm going to do is draw dicks. So, um, so here we go. This is happening. So the, the penis dragon actually has teeth. It makes it more fierce and feared by its enemies. Uh, oh, that's too much. I feel like the penis dragon might become a recurring character uh, in Terminal Lance. So uh, look out for him. I really want to bring back Chongo, actually. Chongo is one of my favorites. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, he was the guy in, um, in that strip about... Uh, it was about um, um, how Marine Corps promotion stuff would never work in the real world. Um, and so it's like, you know, he brings Chongo in the office. He's like this fucking big retard. And he's got like, these eyes that go separate directions. And he's all like, now Chongo might not be very smart, but he runs really fast and he can do 20 pull-ups and he's great at shooting a rifle. And then Chongo's just like, oh! And he's like, settle down, Chongo. Um, God, I love Chongo. He was one of my favorites, so I might I might try to bring him back. So you got to give the penis dragon his uh, furry mane at the balls because that's important for a penis dragon to have. Um, and I like to apply uh, some nice hatching. Hatching is a form of sh of uh, shading. Um, you know, to really get that that penis dragon uh, realism going, you know. And for those of you unfamiliar with uh, the penis dragon, he was featured in uh, uh, not this Terminal Lance, but the one on uh, Tuesday about the uh, Staff Sergeant's uh, clipboard. Um, and this is what was on his clipboard. I feel like if you were in the Marine Corps long enough, eventually you just become really good at drawing dicks because it's like, that's all you do, really. <laughs> Gotta give him a vein. <laughs> oh, this is too much. So the penis dragon, you know, he breathes fire, but it's more like a liquid fire. <laughs> uh. You have to write. You have to write penis dragon next to the penis dragon. Otherwise, it just doesn't have the same effect. Um, yeah, so there, there, you, there you have it. Uh, <laughs> um, that's uh, that's the penis dragon right there. I'll I'll throw this up on Terminal Lance so uh, you know you guys can 
Maybe I'll I'll give it a little bit more shading here so it's nice and uh, make it look nice, you know, because that's important. Uh, a couple more veins. Um, Max, you'll notice Max, your audience is uh, is really enjoying this. <laughs> uh, I'm glad because fuck. Um, okay. You'll notice it's actually uh, a circumcised penis dragon. Um, okay, I'm I'm done with the penis dragon, but <laughs> so uh, uh, let me see here. Do we have any other questions here? No, we don't. Okay, well, I guess I'll draw something else then. Yeah, there's a couple of questions in here, Max. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, will there be a penis dragon t-shirt? I would love to make a penis dragon t-shirt. I don't know how many Marines would actually wear it, but I'm totally going to make one. Because uh, <laughs> um, I think it'd be hilarious. And uh, There's a couple other t-shirt ideas I had, but um, I haven't really had a chance to do them. Uh, let's see here. Time for an actual question. Can you give any tips for drawing hands? I can never seem to get them to look authentic. Yeah, actually, um, hands are like one of the notoriously most difficult things that people have trouble drawing. And I don't know what it is about hands. Like they're just they're just a pain in the ass. Like no matter what. Um, and even for me, like you know, I draw every day for money, and I you know I still. I still have trouble drawing hands sometimes, so, um, you know, but the, the, the same thing with drawing hands applies to, or the same thing with drawing anything applies to hands too, so like, um, like you know how I was telling you, get the general shape of the head and stuff and think about the planes and everything uh, when you're drawing a human head, the same thing applies to, uh, applies to hands, so like you just want to get the kind of like general shape. So be really loose, you know, just like what, is, what does a hand sort of look like? And that, that should be going through your head with like anything you draw, not just hands, but like anything. Like what does this sort of look like? And then just kind of like get it, get the gesture of it kind of just in. You know what I mean? So, you know, don't worry so much about like the technical like exactness of it uh, when you first kind of start doing this like really loose uh, pencil thing. And this is kind of how I draw everything. So I do like, you know, no matter what I'm drawing, if it's hands or, or faces or, or anything else, like you always get this kind of loose, um, loose uh, under drawing penis dragons and everything. Like you just, you need, you need to get the general idea before you can actually execute it. So there, you know, that's, that's basically sort of like what a hand looks like. And then, um, uh, and then I would go in with the black and be like, oh, hey, this is, and then, you know, really figure it out at this point. But, you know, it's, it's, it's important to get the general idea of what you're trying to draw before you draw it. And it doesn't, and again, it doesn't matter what it is. It can be hands or, or anything, really. Um... But yeah, hands are notoriously difficult for everybody, myself included. I mean, they're just a pain in the ass, like, no matter what. But I mean, yeah, so this is like a hand, sort of like doing some crazy, uh, like, oh, like, I don't, I don't even know. But <laughs> uh, that's the sound effect. That's the sound that I imagine whoever is owning this hand would make right now. He's like going, oh. Um, Yeah, and then, I mean, I don't know, you can get all kinds of crazy with it, like, sometimes I like to just add, like, little lines and shit to just kind of, I don't know, I mean, this is basically a doodle, so it doesn't really matter, but, and, you know, it, and like I said before, think about it as, like, a three-dimensional object, um, and really think about, like, where the planes of a hand are, and there's a, you know, there's a lot of good books on drawing hands and stuff, but, I mean, I feel like drawing hands is like the same thing as drawing anything else. Just try to keep it loose. 
try to get the general idea of what you're trying to draw. Um, and then, you know, I think one of the most important uh, things that any artist can do, and I think it's more important than people realize, is uh, gesture drawing. So instead of like, don't don't get those stupid like how to draw cartoon books or whatever. Just go out and like look at people and sketch them and just like, you know, get a really loose sketch. Get their gesture. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be anything. This is just for you. This is like, you know, this is essential to any artist. Like the gesture, I think, is more important than than knowing every inch of the anatomy, um, because without the gesture, you really don't have a good drawing. And like, you need um, these really loose kind of like, what does this body sort of look like? Like, what does what does this guy sort of look like? Like, you know, what's the pose? Like, what is what is what are his arms doing? Maybe he's got his arms crossed. And this is, you know, that's that's sort of what somebody with their arms crossed would look like. And that's that's really all I would do. If you look at my sketchbooks, you'll see just hundreds of pages filled up with just stupid drawings like this, like that are just, you know, and I'm not trying to, to make it look real or anything. It's just kind of like, what does this guy's pose, like, just sort of look like? And I feel like people that focus on gesture more than, than trying to do these kind of like how to draw whatever book sort of instructional techniques, they tend to have much better... Uh, grasp of um, of poses and like and the weight of their characters looks so much more realistic um, than people that don't. And even then, like this is a gesture drawing, but because I do kind of focus on gestures so much compared to probably a lot of other artists, um, this is actually like this would be a good under pencil drawing for me. So like, you know, I would actually draw another layer on top. Like if I was doing a new if I was doing like like a finished drawing, like that would actually probably be what my under layer would look like. And then from here, um, I can go in and, and actually draw like a character or whatever, because I already know where everything is and I know what the pose is going to be. This is really crappy because I'm doing with the cuff, but still. But, I mean, you know what I mean, like, this is, like, all you need is just, like, this kind of basic gesture, and this is really all you should focus on. And if you're, if you're like, really genuinely interested in getting better at drawing, then just go, you know, buy a sketchbook and take it to a coffee shop or on the train or on the bus or something and just draw people, just draw people. People are, like the simplest and most advanced thing you can ever draw on some level. And so, like, when you master the ability to draw people, you can pretty much draw anything. Um, so that's really important, no matter what you fo what you intend to focus on. Uh, let's see here. I think we got some other questions. We've only got a few minutes left, so let's look at this. Uh, just joined, and there's a penis dragon in front of me. Nice! Uh, if you make a penis dragon t-shirt, it needs to be a green PT shirt. If you do, I'll go back in the Marines just to wear it for PT. <laughs> uh, I'll keep that in mind. How often do you have Marines recognize you when you're out and about? Um, not that often. I mean, it might just be because I live in the Bay Area, and there's really not that many uh, Marines out here. I did run into a Marine um, a few weeks ago. I was with a friend, and uh, and he was like a lieutenant. He saw me, and he like, he like bowed to me. <laughs> and it was so funny because it like, you know, Three years ago, when I was a Lance Corporal, he would have just as soon flipped me off as, as like, told me to shut the fuck up. So, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic now. Um, but not that often, actually. I've actually been more, uh, more often recognized by, um, by civilians than I have Marines. It's really weird. I, you'd be surprised, like, how many civilians actually read Terminal Lance. Uh, Marine in dress blue slaying the penis dragon. Please draw. <laughs> Have you ever tried to draw Charlie? Yes. Actually, I've, I've drawn Charlie quite a bit. I'm actually working on an animated short. Um, I've been posting about it on my Tumblr uh, called A Dog and His Boy, and it's about 
it's about a Marine that goes to Afghanistan and it's told through the point of view of his dog. Um, and the dog is based on Charlie. So I've been drawing a lot of Charlie lately, actually. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm currently working on. Uh, I'm hoping to have it finished by summer, but I don't know if I will. Uh, what is the dumbest, funniest stuff you've ever heard an NCO say? <laughs> um, God, I don't know. That's a that's a hard question. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to get back to that. That's that's. I have to think too hard for that. What subjects won't you draw in your comics? You know, it's funny. There's um, there's something like Marines have a very eclectic sense of humor, uh, myself included. But there's some things that you can't touch, and um, one of those things. Uh, for, first, let's talk about the dog thing here. This is like uh, a couple weeks ago. There was the the dog handler strip that I did uh, about the the dog handler that ends up like making out with his dog in the third panel. <laughs> the joke being the dog handlers fuck their dogs, which of course isn't true, but it was a joke, and uh, dog handlers took it very seriously. Um, I don't regret that strip at all. I thought that was hilarious, and, and they can deal with it. Uh, the there, there are some things I won't touch, though. Like So um, what was the one? The one about the metal, uh, the recent one that I did. I think it was... Um, Last week, last Friday, there was a strip about uh, about the new um, whatever the hell the new the new metal is called that that drone uh, drone operators get to have for being a drone operator. And the original idea was actually um, to do one about um, this guy who's like a drone operator and he's like arguing with a guy who like doesn't have any arms or legs and he's like this marine like you know he's like an amputee and he's like in a wheelchair and the guy's like uh, talking about how he got a bronze star and this, this huge engagement in Afghanistan and then the guy's like oh yeah well I got this this medal and uh, and I'm a total badass he's, like, he's just like totally full of himself and uh, and then the punchline which is awful which is why I didn't do it um, was uh, the guy with the, the drone operator was going to be like, oh, well, it's a good thing you don't have any arms or legs because I would ask you to salute me if you did. And then I was like, oh, man, like, you know, it was like, it's funny in a way, but at the same time, it's like there's some things you just can't touch. Um, and I feel like people would have taken it the wrong way and they would have got really offended at that joke. And there's, you know, so it, like there's some things I won't joke about. Um, amputees is one of them. Uh, though there was there was that Corman strip, and I think a lot of people got offended at that one actually. So, uh, you know, you live and learn. Um, so that's why I didn't do that version of the strip because I knew people would would get offended by it. And it is, and it's not about amputees; it's actually about making fun of those the drone metal. So uh, there's that. Um, what's the best thing that happened to you in the Marine Corps besides EAS? <laughs> You know, I don't. I don't regret my time in the Marine Corps at all. I, um, I think it was a great, it was a great experience to have. I think it gave me a lot of perspective on, um, on things that people like. You know, you look at other people my age. Uh, you know, tw I'm 26, and like I'm in school, and you know, I meet people that are my age, but it's like there's this vast gap in life experience and it's like I went to Iraq and I went around the world and I've done all this shit and um, I find it's it's really hard for me to relate to people that are my own age because they haven't done stuff like that or very rarely have they done anything like that um, so yeah I, as far as like the best thing that happened to me I would just say that the whole experience was probably the best thing that happened to me um, I mean, it sucked. A lot of it sucked, and a lot of it's worth making fun of. But at the same time, it was. Uh, I'm I'm glad that I did it. You know, I wouldn't be here talking to you if I didn't. Um, what is? Uh, um, what was your favorite strip that you've created? Um, I love the uh, the swarm. There was a. It was just this really simple three panel joke about. Um, uh, the the boot camp drill instructors and they just kind of like swarm this recruit, um, and there was no dialogue in the strip, 
and um, and I, I loved that that strip because it didn't need any dialogue. Like all the images and sequence just told that story, and I think that's the best way to write comedy. I think it's so much harder to write comedy without words than it is to write it uh, with with language with with uh, having because you're pretty much explaining a joke to somebody when you're telling a joke. And unfortunately, I do that a lot. You know, Terminal Lance has a lot of dialogue sometimes, but I prefer the jokes where there's less dialogue, uh, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I think I think we're out of time actually. So, uh, thank you very much for your uh, for your lesson today, Lance. Uh, I think you're a big hit with your audience. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed my uh, my penis drawing. Um, and I hope you enjoyed, you know, seeing Abe and Garcia kind of being drawn. And, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope this was at least slightly entertaining for people. So <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you again, Lance, or Max, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for all of you that have been watching us on YouTube, uh, feel free to follow us on Google Plus at uh, VetNet Entrepreneur Track and to check out the uh, VetNetHQ.com. Uh, Max, do you have anything to uh, to close us out with? Um, yeah, just you know, stick around, Terminal Lance. Um, you know, keep keep updated on the Facebook page. Uh, keep keep reading the comic, and uh, look forward to new stuff. Um, I do have other projects in the works right now, and uh, you know, just just try to keep up with it, and uh, hopefully, you'll see some new stuff soon. Awesome. Thank you, Max. We're all looking forward to the future of uh, Terminal Ants and your, uh, your drawings. All right. Thank you. Thanks again. You have a good day.